Okay, number three. Number three, there are two different approaches that you can do with this problem. The first approach is the one that I showed in the answer key that was sent to you, but I'm going to show you another process as well. First, let's go through the method I showed on the sample test. If you have a, just a single fraction with an x next to it and only a single number on the other side, this is when this method will work. We're going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this. Now the reason why we're going to multiply by the reciprocal is because if you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, we're always going to get 1 as the answer. And that's the idea here. We want to get a 1 in front of the x and then we know we've solved that problem. So what's the reciprocal? It's just the same fraction with the numbers flipped. We're still going to have the negative sign there as part of your answer. So we're going to do negative 4 thirds. We're going to have and we're going to multiply everything by, by that. So when you do the one side, you have to also do to uh, the other side. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative 4 thirds. Now again, the reason why we're doing that is because now you're going to notice that the 4's cancel and the 3's cancel and negative negative gives you a positive or if you multiply across the top across the bottom you'll get 12 over 12. Either way you're going to get a 1x and a 1 you don't have to show in front of the x you can actually just leave that as just single, just regular x. Now when you do the one side you have to do the other side as well so over here we're going to multiply it across the top across the bottom across the top we're going to get negative 48 and then on the bottom we get 3 Remember that you always want to make sure you reduce your answers to lowest terms. That's what the directions in the test will say. So we can reduce that down to x is equal to negative 16, and that's the same approach that was on the sample test. But let me show you another method of doing this. If this one is too confusing for you, you want another method. The other method goes back to what I did in the first problem where I cleared out the fractions by multiplying both sides by the common denominator. We're going to do that approach next. Okay, so we'll do the same problem over again, but this time we'll do a different approach. Okay, so the common denominator here is 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4, just like I did in the first example. Negative 3 fourths x. Over here, I have 4 over 1, and I'm multiplying it by 12, and once again, I'll write that as 12 over 1. So I'm putting a 4 on both sides of the equation. Everything else is the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply through. The 4's are going to cancel out and I get negative 3x. Over here, 4 times 12 is going to be 48. And now you want to do the opposite operation. There's a multiplication that's happening whenever you have two things sitting together. That means it's multiplication. We do the opposite operation, which is going to be division. Divide both sides by negative 3. And when you do that, you do get exactly the same answer as before as expected. You get negative 16. So either way, it's fine. As long as you show your work on your test and you show me how you got to that final answer, it doesn't matter what method you show me. You always want to make sure you show steps here because that's how you can get the full credit. You have to show your steps to get full credit on these particular problems.